to meet you. What's Thank going you. on? Hey. Cool. This is our beautiful studio. Uh, Very bright light for the morning that this is yeah. for us. Yeah, we, we shine a little too brightly. The squinty, you the squinty, you know, you'll get the squinty bella today. <laughs> there right. you go. Uh, in about 10 minutes, I'll come and give you like a two minute warning. Cool. That sounds great. This is the door that everybody comes in, just so you know. I've been trying to write some stuff over there with the. I yeah. heard you. Oh, did you hear <laughs> I did. Oh, yeah, I was yeah. screaming. I, all I wanted was, because we haven't been home in a very long time. Yeah. And you know when you have a riff in your head? Yeah. And if you don't record it, you're going to lose it. You're That's just what happens, yes. you know. And I was just, every time I tried to get, I put, I put uh, on my recorder, I pressed it. I swear to God, somebody else came through the door. I said, stop, I want to go home. And I just, I kind of was, that morning, I want to be home on a Sunday morning writing. It would have been great, but I'm not. Um, so that, you just, I'm, I, I apologize. So it's not always like that, but it just today was, I had this, this thing, I, I woke up with, ah, I got to get in here. I got in here, but then it became a turnstile. This thing was a twist, though. I apologize for that. No, when the creative juices hit, you gotta... Yeah, if you don't, you're fucked. That's the way it is. You, you forget it. So, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So, everybody out there, this is Michelle Masato, Unrated Magazine, backstage. And if you haven't guessed already, Frank Bellow of Anthrax. I can't guess that. Look at this. Hi, how are you? <laughs> and we are at on the Killthrax Tour 2017 in Kansas City. Welcome to Kansas City, Frank. Thank you. Thankfully, it stopped raining. Yeah, you know, we've had a lot of rain... I mean, just we had snow the other day in Denver, like a lot of snow. It didn't. It, it's been hitting us this whole tour. I, I, we did six weeks of Europe, not really good weather. So we had nine whole days off, and then we came out for another six weeks. And the only really, I think we've had five good days of weather. I don't know what's oh, going on. Yeah. There seems to be a cloud over the bus. Well, but maybe it's a good omen. That's okay. It's, it, it's for metal. That's it's right, for rock and roll. <laughs> Well, um, I'd like to head off with your uh, For All Kings album. Congratulations Thank on hitting the top ten. Uh, yeah, only we're the second excited time. About that. Yeah, we're, we're pretty excited about that. In this day and age, imagine that um, metal, you know, and a metal record for a band that's been around over 30 years okay. being top ten. So we're pretty excited. We're still excited about everything that's going on. Even this tour, you'll see. It's, um, if, it's, if it's not sold out, it's usually packed on this Kelthrax tour. So there's a lot of... There's a whole different thing going on. There's a new generation of fans coming in along with our, our fans and from the big four way back, um, a couple, few years back, and uh, that brought a whole, new, a whole new thing coming into, a whole new influx of fans, which is great, from, uh, that maybe hurt them. You see what I mean? Did I not say anything about this door? There's always, what was that? Is there a ghost? Hey. It's it's being on tour. I'm gonna go check my pants right now. No, <laughs> no, it, it's been a, a great great run. <laughs> I'm not kidding about this. Uh, this this has been a great run uh, from the big four on, uh, where a lot of people hadn't got to see Anthrax. Maybe they, they heard of it and never saw them. That's right. And now and there's a whole new thing coming in, which is great. It's you fun. and our you and our kids are are still listening to you. It's all good. Thanks. <laughs> so. Um, it sounds like you wrote a lot more than the album could hold. Yeah. Do you yeah. foresee another album coming again? Yeah, we definitely. Anthrax, um, we're pretty stoked about what's going on. There's no reason to, to even slow this machine down. It's uh, the band. First off, the band is getting along really well, which is always important after 30 years. You're, you know, the truth of the, the matter is, when you're in a band, you're like brothers. You see each other more than your families. Mm -hmm. And look, at the end of the day, you need some space, but. After a while, you, you miss everything. You know, you need a couple of weeks off, and you want to come right back out and play. But um, I, I think it, this this band's hungrier than ever now. So uh, yeah, as far as a new record, there will be a new record, and uh, uh, I'm sure that it'll start. I mean, you saw it before. We were just starting, I was just I had a riff in my head. I had to play. <laughs> so awesome. and I was screaming. I, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't get a closed environment, but. Uh, you need some space for yourself a little bit sometimes. So you've been basically touring every day, or, or performing every day or every other day for the past two months. Yeah. So how do you keep your energy level up and stay in the game? Well, <clears throat> it's funny because my my doctor asked me that because you know some of us have stomach issues on the front the fun road, which is always great yeah. to find a clean toilet. Oh. See this? That's the problem <laughs> you guys should know about this on the road. All the really essential thing. Is a clean toilet and a clean shower, and everybody's happy. I mean, everybody's <laughs> happy. That's that's really essential. But and uh, and everything's fine after that. But it's it's not always easy keeping the energy up. Uh, the show, the music gets that, and the crowd. You know that that great magic of taking that step onto the stage where you hear the roar, which is awesome. Uh, that's what we do. That's why we do all this. The rest of it all day, and live on the road for months at a time. 
for that time, that hour and 15, hour and a half on stage, that's what makes it all worthwhile, and we're very thankful for that. Mm -hmm. So will you have a brief period after this tour to relax and take care of some personal creative endeavors? Well, there's, uh, we have a week off. We, we stop, this is a week, there's a week left to this tour. This is six, this is the fifth week, we're going to the sixth. There's a week left, we have a week off, a whole week, and we go to Japan. Oh my God! Um, and which is good. Look, it's good to be busy. I, yeah, I want to sound right. like I'm bitching because I'm very, I'm very happy and thank, I'm very thankful that we're, we're busy. Yeah. But I think sometimes you need to take, um, just get you to know your family again because I'm married with a kid. It'd be nice, uh, it'd be nice to see my son once in a while. Um, and then we we have two weeks off and then we start Europe. Yeah. But from what I'm hearing, Anthrax has a whole August off. So that's August yeah, and half of September. Good. So we might have six weeks off coming, which. Uh, I can get, uh, I can mow the lawn, all that good stuff, and you know, all that, good, all that fun stuff that I love doing at home. So you mentioned your family. You have a son. Yeah. Is he picking up the bass like you? Well, he's he more. Bradley's more of an artist, like his mom. Oh. Uh, he's a, he'll be eleven, which I'm missing his birthday. Let's put, put oh. that out there. <laughs> he's going to be eleven next month. Uh, I'll be in Japan. That I get home the day after. Um, so I'm going to spoil him even more. You know what happens? You know because you feel guilty and you've got to get him a bigger gift and more gifts. Blah blah blah. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, what was your question? Has <laughs> he picked up the bass? Oh no no singing. I, I was always saying because he does art like his mother, yeah. but he also has a really nice tone of a voice, my son, which is really. It's got, I hear him sing. I say, you know, that's really good. And I have all the guitars. I'm not pushing him. I want to push. I would never want to be pushed or push people to do anything. So I just put my guitars around. If you and once in a while I see him just pick up a guitar yeah. and just not knowing, I said, "Well, Brandon, this is." And when I try to start him up, I'm good. And yeah. he wants to go back to drawing. That's fine. Well, he may pick it up someday. Yeah, yeah. He's got started. your voice. You got a well, great voice. Thank you. I started at 13, you know, yeah. really playing. So uh, I, I could see his interest, which is cool. And he, he's definitely the artist kid, which is cool. He's not into sports, but yeah. it's all good. Yeah. Family is everything. Yeah. Family is everything. It makes this life a lot easier. Well, that makes me think, um, being half Italian myself, mm. are you full Italian? Yeah, full okay. Italian. All right. So I assume you're, maybe your grandparents came over from Italy? Yeah, sure, yeah. Um, my, my nanny, my nanny and my grandfather, Papa. Yeah, so they're past now, but uh, yeah, mm -hmm. they were awesome. And my grandmother, my other grandmother, Tina Babes, I call her, she, her parents were from Italy. Uh, that's the one I grew up with. I grew up in uh, that would have been my, Charlie's? Charlie's mom, yes. rest her soul. She was the light of my life, mm -hmm. without a doubt. Um, Missed her every day of my life. Yeah, she's the best. What did uh, that Italian, hardworking Italian immigrant family <clears throat> work ethic did it? This is what you see. I think you see that. In, I mean, Anthrax is a, is a blue collar band. You know that. I mean, sure. you guys know what we do. <laughs> Um, there's, nobody pretends to be anything here. We are who we are. We like to work and we work hard and we, you leave it all out there. That's the way we grew up. I grew up in a, in a deli in the Bronx, for God's sake, and making sure, you know, that I made sure everything was done the right way, clean and everything. It, it's just the way we grew up. Uh, I appreciate those values. You know, I think it's sorely lacking in nowadays. You know, so um, it is what it is, but I try to pass that on. It's just, I like doing things to the hundredth percent. Yes, and it shows. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, including acting, um, yeah. that you dabble on a bit, and yeah. uh, uh, your most recent film was uh, Best, Best Man in the Dark? Yeah, how'd you look that one up? Wow, um, that was crazy. Research. Yeah, that was only a few scenes I did in that one, but really? uh, yeah, okay. I'm surprised you even see well, it. Uh, I saw a clip. Did you see a clip? I wow, did. I hope you yeah. liked it. Yeah. I think I was just yelling at a few people in those yeah. days. Well, you're playing a crazy musician. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was, it was well, fun. Seen, so it was yeah, I am a crazy musician. <laughs> it wasn't a big stretch. Yeah, yeah. Between that and the Buckley film, the Greetings from Tim, the Buckley, uh, Tim Buckley. Film. Yeah, so that was that was fun. Just the bounce off of playing Richard Hell was awesome. Yeah. It was just so much fun and just doing all that research. It's, so much fun to do that, and re there were some serious, really good actors in that that, that uh, mm -hmm. film. So I got to bounce off them, get a lot of secrets and a lot of tricks, and had to really do, to do some fun stuff. So I, look, we haven't had a lot of time off as far as acting. So it's funny. I saw my agent last last week and uh, from L.A. He says, "When?" I said, "Go to Anthrax.com, and then we could start reading for some for stuff again because it's great." To, to balance, but this is my first love, and you know, acting has to come second. That's just the way it is. But I love doing it, I truly do. Yeah, that's neat. Um, so, you might do that in the future. I'll yeah, keep I hope so. Out. All right, awesome. Um, so, if you didn't have the time constraints of being an anthrax, mm. what would you do? 
See, it's funny because you mentioned this, you know, the acting thing on that side. Again, nobody cares about the fame thing. Look, we've all been famous. It's very, very cool to be cares about fame. Really, it's, 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 a, it's a bullshit thing, if I can curse on this. Fame is bullshit. All I want to do is write a good riff and write a good song. And, and it's about getting this, whatever this is, out. The acting is the same kind of thing. It's like going, losing yourself in another character, blah, blah, blah. But David Ellison and I from Megadeth also have a side project called Altitudes and Attitude. Um, Altitudes and Attitude. Altitudes and Attitude. You can look it up. It's on iTunes. Absolutely. We did a few years back. We did a, when we were off. <laughs> we had a, we both uh, did a, a little EP of three songs, and uh, people who've heard it really like it. So if you haven't checked it out, it's called Altitudes and Attitude. I know it's not easy to say. We usually <laughs> call it A and A. That's, that's the nickname for it. But Altitudes and Attitude. Look it up on iTunes. But that's me singing for the most part, and it's just it's a it's like heavier rock. It's yeah. not metal. But it's another side to Dave and I where we don't do an Anthrax and Megadeth, yeah, which is kind of fun. Yeah. So he's being a bass, two bass players? And yeah, yeah, yeah. I play more guitar in that. Did but he? he plays more bass and he's, he's awesome in every way. He's my, he's, we're really close and uh, oh, he's see. a really good dude. So it works with us. So is he from New York maybe too? No, Dave's from Arizona. Oh, yeah, he oh. lives in, well, he's actually from Minnesota, but he lives in Arizona now. So yeah, so we do, we have, in fact, we're writing it right now. I'll see him in Japan. We're gonna, we're gonna, Record a few more songs. Awesome. Fun. Oh, that's exciting. Next year. Yeah, we're looking forward to next year. All right, cool. We had a lot of uh, people after you with this awesome new album, For All Kings. Check it out. Thank you. Um, let's see, you're on with uh, Jimmy Fallon. Yeah. And Seth Meyers. Oh, and you won the Innovator. Innovator Award? The Golden Gods thing, yeah, I forgot about that one. That was fun. That was I mean, a new award created just for you guys? Yeah, I guess uh, I guess we're innovators, whatever that means, you know, yeah, whatever that well. means to everybody. I just want to write a good song. I just want Anthrax to write the best songs possible. They want to give an award for it, cool. It's a way to promote those songs that you wrote to get it out to the people. And, you know, I'm not a big award guy, you know, but um, okay, thanks. Yeah, well, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Um, plus, you got a, a new beer out. How did that come? Yeah, war dance. We tasted it. Has anybody tasted the war I dance? I would love to right now. So here's here's how I'm I'm so proud of this beer. Here's why. Because number one, not to be called a beer snob, but we pretty much we've been around a few years. Anthrax. We like our beer. I can tell you the amount. If I I can't tell you the amount of times we had to send back and for tastings about what we didn't like, what it needs, what it didn't need. Okay. We truly, I mean, we truly kept sending back a lot of stuff going on. And uh, and where I thought, I couldn't believe it. there was actually a time where we actually liked it together. There was, it got to this point where, wow, we were all agreeing on this. And it got to this point where, I, I'll tell you, man, people are comparing it to some of the best beers out there. That's so awesome. So I'm really excited. We're just trying to get it out. And, uh, you know, ask for it at your local pub. Yeah. And they yeah. can get it. So it's called War Dance. Okay. So look for it. And, uh, we're really excited about it. And look, and I say this, I got a case delivered to me, and that case was done within a week. So I know, I'm, not a, I'm not the biggest drinker in the world, but uh, it's a really good beer. You can't just have one. It sounds like, a, it sounds like one of those vomiting things, but you, you can't just have um, one of those. All right. Yeah, we got a few uh, breweries here in Kansas City, so yeah. give them a for Absolutely. Yeah. Love to. Um, and speaking of drinking and drugs, so many times addictions to those things will bring down a band. How did you guys escape that? Well, it's funny because I think that we're going back to the way we grew up. Look, some people have houses that drink a lot. We eat a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Anthrax eats a lot. We love food. Um, we grew up in New York. There's a lot of great food there. Our families have always been great cooks, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Wine is important. I love, you know, uh, the most drinking we did in the 80s, Anthrax really didn't drink. But the 90s, we went on tour of Pantera. That turned everything around. God, God rest his soul, dime bag. We had some yeah, really fun yeah. times. He showed me the way <laughs> with uh, black tooth and all that good stuff. And um, look, and we like our whiskey now. We like our, our, our vodka and, and all that good stuff. Frenet Branca. Um, but it's all moderation, like you know. You yeah. can't let it. Why would I want to take that? Make that take over what I do? That that would that would hurt playing. I can't do that. That's that's what I love. That would take the love away. I can't do that. You know, that, that pulls it away. It's just the truth. So I know people have problems, but you can get help for those problems. And I hope you, I just hope for the best for people. Yeah. You know, there's a way to do it. What advice would you have for uh, young musicians out there trying to make it in this business? Well, it's not easy. You gotta know that right off the bat. Look, if you, if you have any kind of passion, you gotta live this, this life. I mean, and we're still living it. And I say living it by day to day. It's really hard. 
in every way to start up a band. I want, I, I promote young people playing. I want more people playing this instead of this. Yeah. I think it's important. You can do both. You can do both. I have a son who does this. He both does the video games, but um, I believe that this is an outlet for your life. But for me, when my, my dad left when I was young, this was my outlet to get rid of some of that pain. So this got rid of that. It, it alleviated the pain. So I believe this is a great outlet for people who are just feeling emotions. I just think it's really positive in, in every way. So this could, you don't have to make it in oh my god, I have to be a rock star and all that stuff, you could just play to play. And uh, and then see where it goes from there. If you want this, then go for it. Absolutely give 115% and don't stop. That's that's the way I look, I look at it. <laughs> well, if you do what you love, you're... You have to love it, you know, and really love it. Really love it. It's just, it, fame is all nonsense. I'm not answering that, door. Yeah, just a couple more that. questions. Yeah, no, you got it. We'll right, just leave right. it out. Um, so sports, did that ever... Yeah, interest yeah. With sports in high school, it's funny, because I grew up with baseball too, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, New York, all that's the Yankee fan. Uh, it was either, you know, for me it was music and sports and baseball. So in high school, I played, I played baseball all throughout. Mm -hmm. So what was I going to do at 17 years old? Was I still going to go for baseball? Well, music was more important. That's what came out. So, uh, and then I, you had to make your choice. I, I went into anthrax. I got into anthrax at 17. So and Hi, Jeremy. It. He's done, bud. No. <laughs> Good oh, sorry, just the phone I'll probably lose again. Well, it's two phones on this. So, a Yankees fan? Yeah, I am a Yankees fan because I grew up 10 minutes from the stadium. Okay. Oh, and so, wow. and all my family were Yankee fans, so I guess that carries on. And, uh, you know, we played Yankee Stadium. We were lucky enough to play on the Big Four Yankee Stadium. It was a big one of the highlights of our career, so it was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, so. Uh, Again, this has been a great run for Anthrax. I look at it, and I always look at it when I'm doing interviews. Man, I say, wow, we did that. Cool. But I, I think Anthrax is so hungry. I have to tell you this. I can't convey this enough. This is a hungrier band now than we've ever been, which is a good thing. That is a good thing. It sounds like a monster coming in. <laughs> Let's go. Well, it looks like they're going to tear <laughs> you worry. away from we got us. But, uh... You got a couple more. Go ahead. OK, great. Um, so what do you envision for the future? Uh, as far as music. Yeah, I just, I want to push the boundaries with Anthrax. I think we all want to push the boundaries. We're in a good writing place with, uh, I don't know, whatever whatever we are doing together, collectively, bouncing off, maybe arguing about music and stuff, I think that's great. I think that builds the intensity. Whatever we're doing, I'm sure it's going to continue with that because people have really loved the last couple of records we put out. So, um, and really have taken it on. It's And it's really, you can see it rising, which is a really great thing. So. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? And there's a lot of inspiration with uh, the political. For oh yeah, to say the least. I, hey, look, life is an inspiration. The way I, I I watch the news and I laugh a lot because you better have a sense of humor now. Mm -hmm. um, it is what it is, but we'll get through it. We'll get through it because we have to. What are you gonna do? You gotta, you can't do this. You gotta stand up and and, and deal with it. Well, uh, music was you know your passion and your outlet for your emotions growing up, but uh, you are music. Metal music was for me. You're cool, thanks. So yeah, it's important. I, I think music in general is important for people. You know, uh, it's not. I think this generation that's coming up now, I see it's not as important because there's so many distractions. There are a lot of distractions. There's video games. There's films. There's, I get it, but I just want people to know how there isn't there is an outlet out there, and it's it's really important that you, you give this a chance. I mean, this isn't going to get you everywhere all day. You know, it's. Uh, I, I just want more people to play. I think it's really important. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, are you involved with um, any charities that get kids? Oh, yeah. There's, there's a bunch of kids you know, music programs we do. I, I've done some high schools and stuff in New York. And pre, and uh, and uh, I have funny. I just did my son's uh, music class uh, just before I left for this tour. His teacher, his music teacher, asked me to come in and just talk and just talk to the kids. And you know, these are 11, 10 year, 11 year old kids, which I love talking to because I. I'm a kid in my, my head, right. and I just and she she brought up the Anthrax website, and you know I, I look reserved. I, I had you know I had dad gear on, I had my hair back, and shaved all that stuff. So, and she put up the website on the big screen. She goes, and she goes, is that you? I said, yeah. and she had my face open on some big stage. Ah, you know, she goes, that you? that's the other guy, you know that that's the other guy. But you know, that's not dad. That doesn't that's not what Brandon, my son, knows. But uh, I'm all about pushing this forward. It's all about that because I think it's really important. Inspiring, you know, the yeah. next generation. Yeah, like I'm little sorry. kids rock. They, uh, little kids rock. I've right, heard that right. before. I think it's really important to just help out, you know. Um, 
I knew you was Frankie growing up. Are yeah, you call I mean, me Frank now that you got this uh, well, well, I got you guys getting crazy. <laughs> um, a lot of grays. Um, I'm either way. I'm Frankie because but people grew up in the Bronx. They was hey Frankie, how you yeah, doing? Yeah, you know all that stuff. But I can go by anything. Frank, Frankie, it's almost like dick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I don't care. Like, you want dick? You want to go? It's fine. I don't care. Whatever and works. your last name, I want to ask you about. I know it's an Italian name, Bello, yeah. but it also means handsome man. And being well, a rock like star, I, I'm like, is that your real name? It is. It's weird. Like, I mean, it's always been. If you look up my way back when, it's still always been my dad, my my grandmother, my nanny. When we were talking about my nanny before, though, that's always been Bello. So it's a. Uh, yeah, it seems like there should be something else, like it, it cut off, like it's, it's like Bella a stage name, like right? Joey like, Belladonna. Yeah, yeah, Belladonna. So yeah, it's, it me and Joey were related. No, we're not. <laughs> right, um, right. <laughs> no, we, as far as I know, way back, I mean, two generations, not that I know of. So whatever works. Yeah, cool. What do you think your uh, grandma and grandpa or pa's would say to you? Yeah. Uh, I would hope, because... Um, all I've ever, they were very freeing for me, my, especially uh, my grandmother Tina. She really pushed this. She said, "Go for it." You know, she says, "If you like doing it, go for it." And I love her for it. And and with Charlie, my drummer, we grew up in the same house because I, I went to live with them when I was younger. Um, I really, I think she would say, she came, she came to Yankee Stadium. That was the last Anthrax show she saw before she passed. So and she had cancer and all that stuff. So uh, I. That was a great moment that we could actually do a show to that magnitude, uh, of that magnitude, and she saw us together playing on that huge stage and That's in this right. big place. Uh, uh, I think she would say, "I'm glad." She she'd just be happy for it because she was yeah. happy for us because she was the best. She yeah. was the best. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, three Italians in the band, and you yep. grew up with Charlie. I, I guess well, Scott started the band, and yeah. then Charlie came yeah. in, and yeah. And Scott's Jewish, right? Yeah. And I think we're all inter we're all interconnected. I don't think anybody's different, you know. And that's what I love about music. And Scott, and Scott, Charlie, and I are really think about and Joey. How long have we been together? Yeah. And we're we're very much a family. And families, remember this. And I'd say we always get along the best all the time. Brothers fight. We're brothers. Yeah, and that's right. what happens. <laughs> we all have our ups and downs days. And not to say we don't get along. We do. But I just I don't want people to think oh it's all happy rosy. It's not. Yeah. That day to day life is not easy, but you you learn how to adapt. You guys look amazing. Uh, thanks. I have to say, thanks. maybe the physical. It's all bullet, yeah. really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what it is. It's also, and you know what? If you, I do yoga now, you find yeah. ways. For, I, you have to eat right. All this stuff. Yeah. Look at the stuff we have on our rider now. I mean, there's no junk anymore. No? This is all okay. gluten free stuff. Yeah. I mean, because <laughs> if you don't, if you don't, if you don't eat right, and then at this age, and what we do on stage. Yeah. You, you just go down. You yeah. can't do this. So, it's an inspiration. Um, I'm a bit of a weekend athlete to see you guys up there jumping around. That, that's the whole idea. If we could pass the torch <laughs> to anybody and make them feel better about their lives, yeah. that's really what it's about now. Yeah, great. Well, thank you so much, Frank. Great, great interview. Have thank a, you. Have a hell of a show and a great rest of the I'll show. I'll work on it. Thanks. We'll do. We'll do all right. All right Thanks. All right. Good. Good deal. Good job, guys. Thank you so much. Come on.